Hey guys, and thanks for tuning in to another edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, measuring for the proper length push rods. So if you're working on a new build, uh, particularly if you've changed uh, camshafts that might have a different base circle from um, your old camshaft or from the, the stock camshaft, uh, if you've changed cylinder heads, particularly if you, uh, like me, have had the cylinder heads uh, machined, so mine are shaved 25 thousandths, so that's going to change uh, this distance, so that's going to affect push rod length. Uh, or if you've changed uh, anything else in the, the valve train, uh, it's a good idea to measure uh, and make sure you've got the proper length push rod. Uh, certainly if you've changed uh, to a different style uh, thickness head gasket, so if you went from the GM uh, multi-layer steel or, or uh, composite head gaskets uh, to one of the Kometic uh, thinner head gaskets um, that could affect uh, push rod length as well. So it's just a good idea uh, to measure. So what I've got here, uh, this is a push rod length checker uh, from Comp Cams. Uh, a number of people make these, uh, but this is the one that I'm going to use today. Um, so we'll dive in and I'll show you how to set things up. Uh, so that we can use this tool uh, to measure for our new push rods. Okay, so at this point I've got the at least this side of the block partially assembled. Uh, I'm reusing my old head gaskets, uh, which on this motor uh, were the GM uh, composite head gaskets. Um, so like I said, they're my old head gaskets. They were still in good shape, um, and they've been compressed. So I mic them to just double check the thickness they're at 55 thousandths which will put me very close uh, to the thickness of the multi-layer steel head gaskets that I'm going to use when I do final assembly those are typically typically around 51 thousandths but there's some uh, fluctuation there but that four thousandths difference uh, won't make much of a difference um, I've also installed <clears throat> two lifters so if you saw my previous video about how to disassemble the factory lifter, flip around the internal components, and you can make it a solid lifter uh, so that internal plunger uh, doesn't compress uh, when you're working on things. So <clears throat> if you haven't seen that, I'd suggest go check that out and then come back and pick up from here. But I installed uh, two lifters um, for this cylinder. I guess this would be the number two cylinder. I'm, I'm working on the, the passenger sat here. <clears throat> um, so we've got the lifters in, of course, the lifter tray. Um, so as we're measuring for the proper push rod length, right, we have our intake valve and our exhaust valve. Um, we need to make sure that the camshaft is on the base circle, which is the lowest point on the, um, on the camshaft. So to get the, the proper push rod length. <clears throat> so an easy way to remember this, I don't know if I can get this where you can see it. If you're working on the intake valve, which is what we're going to start with, we know it's on the base circle when the exhaust valve is closing, I'm sorry, when the exhaust is opening. So what that means, so we're gonna work on measuring this push rod length. So you come over here to the exhaust, you can use one of your old push rods, uh, drop it down in there, uh, make sure the lifter's pushed all the way into, down it, it's making contact with the camshaft. When this starts opening, so you'll rotate the motor around And when you start feeling this opening, so I can feel this push rod coming up, so I know that exhaust uh, valve would be opening. So that means that the intake valve is on its base circle. So, take this out. Um, <clears throat> I'll also point out, so I've got the, the rail that the uh, lifters bolt down into. <clears throat> I put in uh, one lifter down here at the end just to help keep this centered. I also, of course, put in some head, uh, some of the head bolts. I didn't put them all in, but I've got um, four here and two down at this end. So just want to make sure that the head is properly uh, centered and that it's at least tight. Uh, I didn't fully torque these down. I put the bolts at, I think it was like 25, 30 foot-pounds. Just enough to make sure the head gasket is... Um, fully in contact and there, there are no gaps. All right, <clears throat> so at this point, so we've got our push rod length checker. 
So you'll turn this out. So each turn is uh, 50 thousandths. So all the way in, it's 6.8 inches. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll go ahead and point out, you're not measuring the overall length of this tool. Um, you have to, to trust there 6.8 because uh, if you measure all the way out here uh, to the tip, to this tip, uh, you'll actually get a little bit more than 6.8 inches, but that doesn't matter because um, they're actually measuring uh, from where this sits down into the cup on your, your rocker arm and, of course, down in the lifter as well. Um, so don't measure overall length of the tool. Uh, start with the 6.8, and then for each turn out, adds 50 thousandths. <clears throat> so I know I'm going to be fairly close uh, to 7.3, 7.4. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this out and at least get me in the ballpark. Okay, so this length here is 7.3. So we'll start with this uh, and see how close it gets us. Drop that in. Then you take one of your lifters. Make sure that the lifter fits up into the, the cup. Uh, it can get hung up on the bottom side uh, of this lifter and that's going to throw off your measurement in a big way if you don't get it centered in the the cup on the, the I'm sorry not the lifter the rocker okay <clears throat> so our goal make sure we get that centered uh, we'll just get this the rocker bolt snug you don't have to torque it down uh, but make sure there's no play we want to get this at zero lash zero lash means that there's no up and down movement in the rocker arm so it doesn't take much but you can tell I've got lash in this so we want to go a little bit longer on our push rod length checker so we'll back this out pull this guy out And we'll do one turn, excuse me, one turn out. Again, make sure that the push rod sits properly into the cup on the rocker arm. Snug this down. You can see at this point, we have no lash. There's no movement in the, the rocker arm uh, once the bolt's uh, seated. But we want to make sure that we didn't overshoot the measurement as well. Uh, but we know we're getting close. So we'll back it out again. And then we'll split the difference. So we did one full turn. So now we'll do half a turn. Let's see where that puts us. So we're going to turn it back in. Half a turn. Now we've reintroduced just a little bit of lash. So when we shortened it half a turn, we introduced lash. So we'll split the difference again. We'll make it a quarter turn longer. And I think that'll put us right on the money.
go. So like I said, <clears throat> just a quarter turn longer. There we go, and no lash. <clears throat> so that got us right on the money. All right, so we'll back this out. Let's check our total length. <clears throat> so the easiest way to do this, we'll pull this back out. And be careful, this thing doesn't lock into place. So as you're handling it, make sure doesn't rotate. <clears throat> so now we're going to count how many times do we have to turn it to get it all the way seated down again. So to get it back to here, that's three quarters of a turn. We got one, two, three, four. Five. There we go. So to get it all the way closed again, that was 10 and 3 quarter turns. And keep in mind that each turn is 50,000. So um, I'll show you how the math works on this. Okay, <clears throat> hopefully you can see this and can uh, read my scribble. So we had 10.75 turns at 50 thousandths each. And then we add that to our minimum length of 6.8. So that gives us a length of the the push rod checker tool uh, of 7.3375. Of course, that only gets us to the point of zero lash. Uh, we also need to account for lifter preload. Uh, there is some flex there in the amount of lifter preload, uh, but typically you're shooting for around 70 thousandths. Uh, so if we take our this length plus 70 thousandths for the lifter preload, that's going to put us right at 7.41. Uh, essentially and the stock push rod length is 7.4 uh, so <clears throat> based on the cam I'm running my milled heads uh, and my valve train uh, at least for this intake valve it looks like I'm going to need a push rod that's around uh, 7.4 inches uh, but that's just the intake valve let's double check we'll repeat the same procedure uh, for the exhaust valve <clears throat> and so See if I can get this back in focus for you. As just as we did for the intake valve, there's a procedure to make sure we've got the exhaust valve on its base circle on the camshaft. So we know the exhaust is on the base circle when the intake valve starts closing. Uh, so what that means, we're going to rotate the motor around. Help if I had a push rod in there. So we're going to spin this around. Okay, I feel the intake starting to open. Feel it coming up. And then when it starts to close, okay, I can feel it going down. So now I know my intake valve would be closing, uh, which means the exhaust valve uh, would be on the base circle on the cam. So now we've got this, the, this one in place so we can do the push rod length check here. So I'm going to at least go ahead and get it close. Since the other was 10 and 3 quarter turns out, um, I'm going to go back something similar and then we can adjust from there. That's 10. Ten and three quarters. So let's see. Where does that put us? Make sure to push on that and make sure the lifter goes all the way in and make sure it's riding on the cam. So we got a rocker arm again. Again, same thing, make sure it's seated properly in the rocker arm. All 
Okay. So just using as a, a jump, jumping off point, the 10 and 3 quarter turns out same length that the uh, intake valve was. Uh, we're at zero lash. So just to double check, make sure we aren't <clears throat> off significantly. I'm going to shorten this just a little bit. Maybe just a quarter turn and we'll uh, adjust from there. Okay, so you can see what a difference uh, just a quarter of a turn makes. Uh, got this snug. That introduced just a little bit of lash. So that's good. Uh, that means both of our, our measurements are coming out the same. Uh, so this one would be the same uh, 10 and 3 quarter turns out, uh, which means it would be right at the, the 7.4 inch uh, push rod length. So that's how it's done. <clears throat> Again, if you're working on a new build and you've changed really anything in the valve train, uh, cam, you shave the cylinder heads, a different thickness, head gasket, a different rocker arms, uh, anything, anytime you change things, it's a good idea uh, to measure uh, for the length of the push rods. Uh, whether you're able to reuse your old ones or need to order new ones, uh, at least this way you know it's correct. So uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to post uh, down in the comments section. Uh, there are other ways uh, of doing this check, uh, but I found this one to be the most consistent. Um, as always, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, that helps me know that somebody's enjoying the videos um, and helps me make uh, new ones as well. So again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.